And yes, um, I started reading Wuthering Heights the other day. And if I remember me right, it said at the start of it that it was first published in 1848. And I th remember thinking at the time, 1848, the year of revolutions. I doubt if there was a country in Western Europe that wasn't affected by the revolutionary year of 1848. It was big stuff going down. And then I was driving down that way yesterday and there was the big monument with the general at the top and cannons all round it and names up and down, down it and whatever. Some big battle was fought there between the French and the Germans uh, in 1878, which was ultimately the Germans won. The uh, Prussians with their spiky helmets on dictating peace terms in the Palace of Versailles to the French. And if we go 30 years before the year of revolution, 1848 to 1818, that was kind of the end of Napoleon. Uh, 1812 was when the French revolutionary armies had swept across Europe and got all the way to Moscow. And obviously, um, Battle of Waterloo was after that, and before that was the whole French Revolution thing. What I'm trying to say here is, what is going on at the moment and what has been going on for decades, bugger all. Nothing. Nothing has been going on. But the inter inter interwebs, the interwebs is full of vile, vile wordings. People just getting completely up themselves, shouting about all sorts of stuff as though it mattered particularly and they mattered particularly. When I don't think either do particularly. So the question today is, on the bullshit front, who is more bullshitty, this lot or this lot? This lot are the people that get on the interwebs and seemingly get all excited and shouty and basically come up with the most vile sort of shit, shit skating splashing shit all over as many people as they possibly can on the interwebs. They must know, surely, that they're not affecting anything. They are farting into a hurricane. They must be doing it just for some sort of personal lack that they've got that is temporarily filled with a little vitriolic outburst on the internet. So there's that lot. And there's this lot. That in, let's say, a family, a family um, uh, environment, they still feel that they, obviously it'll be toned down, they wouldn't do it like they do it anonymously on the internet, but in a toned down sort of way, would be telling Auntie Marjorie how bad she was for voting for Trump or for um, bad body boy Bernie Sanders or whatever, or voting for Brexit and basically affecting things in their local environment. Here on the internet they affect nothing at all. But in their own local family sort of just around them, close proximity, they can affect things. And by being transferring some of their nastiness that they can get away with anonymously on the internet to their local conversations, they can affect things very badly. Telling Auntie Marjorie that she shouldn't have voted Brexit is probably a very, very bad idea. But they do it. Because why? Here we've got to say that 
that we must try and understand what they might be meaning when they say that they feel very strongly about it. I'm, in this video, kind of putting this in a kind of context that I think they do feel very strongly about it. But only because there's nothing else to think very strongly about. And really, they're scraping the bottle of, bottom of the barrel as something to get really upset about. Get upset about Trump or Bernie Sanders or Brexit or a hundred other things that people seem to go absolutely over the top about on the internet. No effect at all can actually adversely affect the feelings of their friends and family for years to come but they still open their stupid mouths. Get themselves in a state for no particular reason. The expression that comes to mind is la France s'ennuie but I won't go into that. Basically, there's nothing much to get up about. But people are just getting up about things just for the sake of it. Feel very strongly about it. It's... it's... Okay. So, who's the bigger bullshitter? This lot that do it anonymously, affecting nothing on the internet. Or this lot that do it in their inappropriately in a very tight local environment that do affect things negatively because they should have if not kept their mouths shut should have more delicately put things across because they've lost There is an expression for it, and I can't think of it. They don't understand that what they're getting upset about is not worth getting so upset about. Th things do happen in life that it could be said that it's worth getting upset about. And it is really best to wait until those things happen and get upset about them. Getting yourself upset on something that doesn't merit getting upset about, which is what we see now on the internet, and we're seeing in our lo certainly over on this side on Brexit, and probably in America about Trump. It's really not worth it. Okay, I'll just finish with this because I normally read comments out. This is a comment by Pope Gregory the Ninth, who might have been a good Pope or not. I haven't I don't know the history of Pope Gregory the Ninth, and I don't think I can be bothered looking him up. Anyway, this um, the article was about Google. I'll, I'll read the whole comment so we can get more of an idea, so we're not just coming in from nowhere. This is quoting the article. Pope Gregory is quoting the article. The memo claimed that it was wrong for Google a company with 80% of its technical roles held by men, to be pursuing diversity. And Pope Gregory says, it didn't say that at all, and I expect you know that. And this is just to basically say, it's not just the commenters on the internet. The internet itself, uh, through media, and I wouldn't be surprised if it happens on the television, I don't know, Newspapers seem to be awful now. They just don't seem to do... They are just an article now. It's really for me. It wants to generate comments and controversy so people watch it. It doesn't want to inform. And the people, like me, guilty want to read the controversy, not the content, because the content isn't worth it. OK. If people are bigots and bullies, I will judge them for that. That was in the article. And Pope Gregory comes in with, fine. But conservatives or people of right-wing persuasion aren't automatically either of those things 
which is where your entire argument falls down. You get the idea from the from the from that that if pe people are bigots and bullies, I will judge them for that. But the author of the article is implying that right wing people are generally bigots and bullies. And Pope Gregory is saying, fine, you can say that, but conservatives or people of right-wing persuasions aren't automatically either of those things. So you shouldn't be saying it. You're a journalist. You should not be saying these things. And this is where I would have gone to straight away, but that was what I've just done is in way of introduction to this. Quoting again from the article, I discriminate against people who are right-wing and conservative. I'm entirely happy to say so. That was in the article, I'll repeat. I discriminate against people who are right-wing and conservative. I'm entirely happy to say so. That was in the article. So Pope Gregory comes in with, OK. Then they are justified in discriminating against you too and will all eventually tear each other apart. And this is what I'm saying here. Getting so upset that you're going to say in a newspaper article that's going to get published, I discriminate against people who are right-wing and conservative, is just demanding trouble. And this is the, the expression La France s'ennuie. There was a time in French history where they hadn't had wars for a long time. And they got bored. And they kind of went around looking for trouble. That's kind of what it meant in a historical sort of way. And this is what I think we get on the internet now. The people s'ennuie. The, we are bored. So we just go round looking for trouble, picking fights for the sake of it, because that is what humans do. And I am being the adult in the room and saying, watch out for this sort of thing. When you go around looking for fights, you'll generally get them. And more importantly, as I said earlier, there will be times in your life where you will want to use extreme when you will be pushed to extremes and it's best to have that expansionary space left untouched so it can be used and then contracted back all of this over puffed up stuff that's being used all the time it's it's childish to be so permanently over puffed up like the people on the internet and the people that think that they must tell Auntie Marjorie how wrong she was in doing what she did. End of sermon.